Well, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, happy to be able to announce that we've uh, reached an agreement uh, with the investor group of Mark Mastroff, Ron Burkle, and Vivek uh, Ronnie Deve, Deve uh, that we are uh, pretty happy about and that we're going to be able to recommend to the City Council on Tuesday evening. Uh, this will result, if approved by the City Council, in a new arena, an 18,500-seat arena in our downtown located at the site of the existing uh, downtown plaza. Uh, this is uh, a milestone that we've worked hard to achieve. Uh, it took a lot of work, and uh, I wish it had been out on Thursday, but uh, Saturday's not bad. Uh, and so uh, we'll uh, have this before City Council for their consideration on Tuesday evening, this coming Tuesday evening, the 26th. Uh, we hope that uh, this uh, uh, agreement that we have reached uh, on the arena will be part of a very strong package uh, that will be presented to the NBA in early April, and then again on April the 18th to the NBA Board of Governors that will result in our Sacramento Kings being sold to this same investor group and instead of being moved to Seattle, stay right here where the team belongs in Sacramento. So we know that there are two elements of this. Uh, when we learned earlier this year that the team would be sold, uh, the first thing we had to do uh, was get out and find a local investor group that would keep the team here uh, through the efforts of Mayor Johnson, uh, he was able to achieve that, and we have these very th uh, strong three investors uh, who want to do that. But we also knew uh, that simply buying the team was what, not enough. It was also important that we have a new NBA-grade arena, uh, in this case, to be located in our downtown. So we think that we now have the two parts of the presentation of the package that we need to present to the NBA. Uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, some of the, uh, the details that are in the term sheet uh, and in our staff report. Uh, first of all, I want to emphasize uh, that all of the principles that were adopted by the City Council uh, that served as the guidance to me in terms of negotiating this agreement have been met. Uh, first of all, we have protected the taxpayer. There is not some new general tax that will be imposed upon the citizens of Sacramento for this. Uh, the uh, amount of money that will be lost to our general fund because of the uh, use of our parking assets will be replaced in full with some margin uh, in case uh, some revenues come up a little short. We will have more than enough to backfill the general fund. So we have met that principle of protecting the taxpayer. Secondly, of course, uh, another objective was to keep the team in Sacramento. We will enter into a 35 year lease to keep this team here uh, with two options for an additional five years each. So that's even better than the agreement that we had reached last year uh, to keep the team here. Uh, thirdly, uh, there's been a lot of concern about the loan uh, that had been made uh, some years ago uh, to the current owners of the team. Uh, that loan will be paid off and we will enter into a lower uh, loan uh, with this new partnership, of course, assuming that the team stays here in Sacramento at the new arena. So we've met uh, the principles that the City Council asked us to achieve. In terms of the City contribution, uh, the City contribution to the arena will be $258 million, just slightly less than the amount that we committed to last year. Those funds will come from two primary sources. We will borrow against the value of the parking that we own. That is the on-street parking and the off-street parking in garages 
that the city owns. We'll, we, we will be able to borrow against the value of those assets to raise most of the money. In addition, a second important piece is that we will contribute land, land that we also already own to the investors. We will not have to sell that land. It will be their responsibility to use that land uh, uh, either for current sale or for future uh, development. Uh, that land value is about $38 million. Uh, so that's what primarily comprises uh, the $258 million contribution. We know that the cost of the arena will be higher. Uh, the estimate of the investors is about $447 million. They will, of course, contribute the balance between our 258 and that uh, $447 million figure. The investors will be the developer, thus relieving the city of that responsibility. So like la unlike last year where we were going to be the developer, that responsibility will be with the investor group. The city will own the arena. The investors will operate it and maintain it and be responsible for scheduling all the events, all of those sorts of things. The investor group will also be responsible for capital improvements that need to be made to that arena over a period of time. Uh, this is truly going to be an entertainment and sports complex, uh, an arena that will bring more entertainment events uh, to Sacramento, some events that we don't get now because we have a facility that is substandard by today's uh, standards in the entertainment world. Uh, so in addition to uh, about 45 uh, uh, days for uh, basketball activity, professional basketball activity. Uh, we expect uh, another 100 to 150 event days for all kinds of entertainment. Now, that's the good news. Now let me tell you some more good news. <laughs> One of the things that the investor group has committed to as part of their intentions here is that they want to uh, attempt to invest more money and develop 1,500,000 uh, additional square footage as part of the downtown development surrounding the arena. Uh, this could be for housing, much needed housing. We know that our downtown will thrive if we can get more people living downtown. This investment could be for additional retail in addition to uh, preserving the retail that's there now. And by the way, uh, we have every expectation uh, that the Macy store will be maintained as part of the downtown plaza. They could invest in additional office space as the market turns around. They could also uh, invest in other kinds of amenities uh, that may benefit uh, their project as well as the city as a whole. So uh, maybe a hotel, for example, could be part of this development. 1.5 million square feet of additional space uh, that we hope to see as part of this development that's on top of uh, a uh, 670,000 square foot arena. And that makes one of the points that I've made all along, which is this is more than about basketball. And of course, we want to see the Kings retained. We want the Kings to be here in Sacramento. They're a great source of pride uh, to this community and to the region. But it has to be about more than basketball to merit this kind of investment of public resources. And that has to do with economic development. That's part of revitalizing our downtown. That's part of completing the rest of K Street. That's part of adding additional businesses to old Sacramento, the, the heart of our city, the, the spot where our city was founded. It's about making land more valuable in nearby areas such as on Capitol Mall. It's about more people coming downtown, staying downtown, spending their dollars for, for meals, for 
uh, socializing, for entertainment, instead of spending those dollars somewhere else. When they're spending their dollars in our downtown, we're also creating revenues for city government. And with those revenues, we'll be able to hire back more police officers, maintain our parks, open our pools, do something about uh, improving our emergency medical service, and so on. But there's also another important element here, and it's about jobs. If people aren't working, they aren't able to pay their taxes. They aren't able to take uh, their family out for a meal downtown. It's about jobs. There, there are 800 jobs at the current sleep train uh, arena that will be preserved in a new project in our downtown. In addition, the construction itself of the arena will generate somewhere between 2,000 jobs locally and perhaps as many as 6,000 jobs statewide because there will be secondary benefits by making investment in a project as large as an arena. So we're talking a considerable number of jobs in a locality that's been depressed uh, since the start of the Great Recession in 2008 where we have lost so many construction jobs, which is really the second largest employer that we have in this region. So, it's about economic development, it's about maintaining and revitalizing and building our downtown, it's about preserving and adding jobs to our economy. So it really is much more than about basketball. involved in all this time, have you put anything more on you waiting until April 3rd to do that? Well, the uh, NBA uh, last time around, in effect, negotiated uh, the transaction. They did not do that this time. Uh, they are involved because, of course, they have to approve any change of ownership and they have to approve relocating a team. So uh, they uh, will be, of course, on the decision-making end of both of those. Uh, we have provided to them uh, this term sheet, this information, uh, and we have been working with uh, their local lawyers who have been asking us questions about all the details. So we will continue to work with the NBA, but it's a, a much different role uh, than they played one year ago. So say the NBA, uh, the NBA says, no, Kings go to Seattle, is this deal dead? Well, uh, this deal as it is constituted, couldn't go forward. Uh, so maybe the question is, would the city still seek to uh, build some sort of entertainment and sports complex? Uh, we have not discussed that with the city council. We've made uh, no decision about that, but, but let me tell you, uh, we're in it to win it, okay? We're committed to keeping this team here, and we're putting in place all of the elements that will get the NBA to, yes, keep that team in Sacramento and allow it to transfer to a new ownership that will keep it in Sacramento. The NBA said that original offer on the Kings wasn't sufficient. It was coming in low. And so is there money left over from this investment group to up that offer and make a, make a legitimate effort for the Kings? You know, the city side of this transaction is really limited to the arena itself. Uh, we have to rely on our investors uh, to, uh, you know, be competitive, uh, to show that their offer is superior uh, to the one in Seattle. So uh, we're not involved in those details, but these are competitive people too, and I'm sure they want to win, uh, and I'm sure that what they will deliver will be a competitive package. So but they've reassured you that the, that the money they're going to come up with is, is competitive or exceeds the Seattle office. That That is not discussion that, that John and I are having uh, but with the, the trio. But if the forward on this, you need to be reassured on that score, right? I mean, this is going to take time and effort from you. So they, they need to have, I would sure. assume, said something to you to reassure you that they're going to make Sure, but our job first was to deliver a, a deal on the arena that gives them that other part of the package to take forward. From your standpoint, John, what do you see as the... What's the desire and the benefit on behalf of the investors of Ron Burkle? Where do they make their money? Do they make their money in the, in the investment and potential of land around the arena? Okay. Uh, 
there are several things that, that are a benefit to them. First of all, uh, if they own an NBA franchise, there are only 30 of those. Uh, presumably, if they take care of that franchise, invest in it, uh, it'll grow in value uh, and their equity will grow as well. Uh, secondly, uh, we expect this arena to be successful and one of the ways in which it's successful is to go beyond basketball and attract many other events. Uh, they will, uh, the responsibility will be on them uh, to bring the top name acts uh, to Sacramento. So uh, they should be able to see profit out of the arena and as a matter of fact, the city, as part of this agreement, there is a profit sharing arrangement and we are guaranteed at least a minimum of a million dollars a year in terms of the share of the profits from the arena. Thirdly, uh, they expect to benefit by reinvesting in downtown real estate. Uh, sure, at the plaza itself, but uh, my assumption would be that if they find Sacramento a good market, uh, they'll make other investments later on. But that's not part of this transaction. Uh, we're just counting on uh, their being successful in the real estate uh, side of this deal as well. Forgive okay. me if we answered this already and step out for a moment. The introduction of Mr. Ranadive, did that allow you to get to the finish line? Well, uh, we think that the, uh, the, the uh, addition of Mr. Ranadive to this package makes for a much stronger presentation to the NBA. He is a known quantity because, of course, he is a current owner of an NBA franchise. Uh, he is also known to Mr. Stern, and he's known to other owners, owners who will have to vote on whether this franchise stays right here in Sacramento. Uh, obviously, he also strengthens uh, the economics of this package uh, because there's more resources behind it. So it gives us greater assurance that they can deliver on every aspect of this deal. But as far as the negotiations for the construction of the arena, this term sheet, did his involvement help you find well, out this? Well, uh, we dealt with one party. I mean, they were organized on their side uh, so that we would deal with only one party, uh, principally uh, Mr. Burkle. Uh, and so we don't know what went on behind the scenes on their side. Uh, we just know that today uh, we got it done. You mentioned that they would uh, that the new investment group would operate the, the, the venue. Is that done directly, or could they use someone like AEG? They they could use uh, uh, someone else. They could use, they could bring in a company to do that. My point is, it's their responsibility uh, to operate the arena. However, they decide to do that uh, is their decision. Uh, how do you like this deal compared to last year? I like it better. Uh, I like it better. Uh, I think that. Uh, there is more security in this deal than the one we made last year. Uh, there are specific features of this deal that are better than last year, such as uh, we're not having to act as the developer. Uh, we get a longer commitment of time, 35 years, with two additional five-year options, uh, as opposed to the 30 years uh, of last year. Uh, there are things about the loan uh, that will add to it being paid down before it's refinanced. That's a plus. Uh, there are uh, things about the uh, operation that are to our advantage, such as uh, we will not be responsible for capital costs uh, in the long run. Uh, so there's that additional assurance to the city as well. There's a guarantee of the profit sharing of a million dollars and that gets adjusted for inflation that was not in the deal last year. Uh, so there are several features of this which make it a better deal uh, for the city, uh, for its citizens, for our taxpayers, for our businesses, uh, all the way around. And while we were very supportive of the arena being in the rail yards, uh, we think that uh, that this location at our plaza will solve another problem, which is what do we do about a declining plaza uh, that has seen its best days and how do we reverse that? So we get more direct investment 
in the core of our city, which we think in time will also benefit the rail yards and make that more attractive for additional investments in the future. A so a lot, of, a lot of things to like here. Here's one for John II. Um, <laughs> John II, okay. <laughs> this, this is round two for you. Uh, how, how are you feeling? I mean, you've got to be exhausted after all this. How do you compare round one and two? <laughs> I, I remember the last year, John had no greater. <laughs> <laughs> well, I consider this uh, maybe round three, actually. But, um, you know, I couldn't be more excited. I, I feel very, very good about um, this uh, particular uh, partnership that we have. It's strong. Um, we have a direct uh, commitment from uh, the partner um, and not through any third parties that they are uh, committed to Sacramento and committed to more than just the basketball team and an entertainment and sports complex. The development that John mentioned, 1.5 million square feet of additional development in our downtown at the plaza, in addition to a 674,000 square foot entertainment and sports center, is, I think, speaks to uh, their commitment to Sacramento and the bigger play for Sacramento that this brings. It's very exciting, and uh, we uh, are very uh, hopeful and confident that uh, over the next uh, few weeks, um, others will see it that way too, and we'll not only keep our Sacramento Kings, we'll not only build the kind of entertainment and sports complex that this region deserves and has deserved for a long time, but we will see our downtown plaza, the heart and core of this region, reshaped into a new and bright future. Very happy. How, how do you tie a pretty bow on this presentation and make it simple and outstanding for the NBA subcommittees on the third? Well, um, you know, much of that will uh, be uh, our, our mayor, and, and I think John will probably say a, a few things about uh, the role that the mayor has uh, uh, played in this effort and uh, in our past efforts. It's been uh, pretty remarkable uh, what he has done and brought to the table, and I'm sure that. Um, he will do much uh, the same uh, this go around with the NBA Board of Governors, and uh, we're there to support him in that presentation. I think our work speaks for itself. Uh, we have terms here uh, that have uh, been crafted, make sense, they're economic. We have both parties in agreement, unlike last year where it was at the end of the process where we actually sat down with the team ownership. They've been with us through this whole process of fairly tight process, but they've been there. This speaks for itself, packaged with that, that ownership group and with uh, uh, the mayor's messaging and uh, uh, efforts back in, in New York, I think, will get us over the, over the hurdle here. Do you guys have any messages we had in our ability to do this in such a tight deadline, with a tight time constraint? I'm, I'm not sure what your question is. I mean... How good is it that we were able to do this in six weeks? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, we, we had to get it done in the time frame that we were given, uh, and we were able to get it done. Uh, it speaks to John's ability. It speaks to the whole team uh, that's been brought together to make this happen. Our treasurer, our investment bankers, our legal talent, both inside the city and outside. There is a very strong team here uh, that's been working on this transaction to make sure that it happens. It happens in the best interest of the city as a whole. Uh, so we did get the job done, but you know, this is just that first piece. Uh, Tuesday, we have a vote by the city council. Uh, it'll be up to the city council to uh, approve this or not, or change it in some way. And then as you point out, uh, the following week, we have a presentation to make uh, in New York to the NBA. That will be led by Mayor Johnson. Mayor Johnson has kept us in this game. Uh, he is the person who went out and identified these, these investors, or whales, as uh, they've often been referred to in the press. Uh, he will be the one who strategizes uh, the presentations that we make uh, to the NBA and obviously uh, lead our delegation there. Uh, so uh, there's still much work to be done. Uh, but this was a very important piece, uh, and I think it just speaks to the strength of the team that we were able to get it done in a fairly short period of time.